Hey everybody, welcome to our next episode. Sorry about the glasses. They look ridiculous once they tint. Uh, they're automatically tinting glasses. It's cold out, which means they tint even more. Um, and my contacts were bothering me. So I took my contacts out. These are my only pair of glasses I have. They look ridiculous when they, when they get dark. Sorry, I don't know if it looks like I'm in the matrix, but you're just gonna have to deal with it. Um, they get really dark when it's when it's cold out and the sun's out. Um, so, welcome to our next episode of Going to the Glass. Today, we're going to talk about partials. Now, there's a reason I want to talk about partials. Seeing a lot of these, I've actually got a tank on that's part of a partial. Uh, I pick up the rest of it tomorrow. And uh, I pick up a manure spreader. There's a reason I want to talk about these partials. Us hotshot drivers are killing ourselves by taking these partials for partial rates. And what I mean by that is around that dollar a mile or less mark, you're killing yourselves with these partials. You don't even realize it. You think you're making good money, and and you're just and and what it's doing is it's going to drive the rates down. It's good. I need to go. I'm, well, I'm in the middle of nowhere. My CB should shut off here. <sighs> Hold on. Sorry, I had to take a break there and turn my CB off. Um, okay. So anyway, we're killing ourselves with these with these uh, with these partials, and I want to explain to you why. And what what the problem is? Some people say, well, who do you what do you care? Well, what I care is, in a year, that guy's going to be out of business. He's going to have his rig, which I see over and over and over and over again on these forums. Hotshot rig for sale. Hot shot, just looking for someone to take over payments. Hotshot rig for sale. One year old, two year old. It's daily. People are posting these. Why they're going out of business? Because they're finding that they're not making good money with this. Now, I want to try to help out with this. I'm, I'm not, um, you, you know, at the end of the day, you can, you're running your own business. That's fine. I just want you to keep this in mind because here's the common mistake I have. I actually did Oh, I forgot it. Hold on. I actually did some uh, pretty extensive preparation for this one. Here's my notebook with some notes. So I got two pages worth of notes. And what we're going to do today is we're going to play a theoretical week in the life of a hotshot truck. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to do a a partial scenario for the week and I started this week I started today in Windsor Windsor Colorado okay now you can I've looked all this up on Google I've I've posted I've I've uh, uh, laid it all out but basically what we're going to do is we're going to say that I picked up my first partial in Windsor or I'm sorry I started in Windsor Colorado now Denver is pretty close to Windsor we're going to say we got our second partial in Denver now I wanted to point this out this is a best case scenario or near best case scenario. I picked places that were along the route for the most part and I and didn't require a whole bunch of crazy deadheading. And I picked rates that I thought were, they seem to be about what people seem to be getting for partials. Um, so, and I understand there's occasion and I've had it where you get two partials that are full truckload rates. So you end up making pretty good money. But what I'm gonna point out here is kind of the the, good case partials where everything's going you get everything lined up everything's picking up the same day and dropping off the same day and you just happen to get out it all lucky with that that's not going to happen but for the sake of this argument we're going to say that happened so you're going from Windsor to Denver okay so our first our first load is going to go from Denver Colorado to Nashville Tennessee so we're going Denver to Nashville Okay, and I'm probably gonna get look crazy in this uh, in this gas station. So we're going from Denver to call it to Nashville. Our next load that we picked up doesn't matter what we're hauling, just that we're able to fit three things on our trailer. Our next load we got was from Sterling, uh, Colorado, to Evansville, Indiana. So Sterling to Evansville. Okay, and our last load we found was going from Ray, Colorado to Florence, Alabama. 
Florence, that's that's Alabama, not South Carolina. Florence, Alabama, okay? These are our three loads we pick up. Now, the Denver to Nashville, load number one. We'll number Sterling to Evansville, number two. And we'll number this load number three, okay? Load number one is paying us $1,200. And it is going... One thousand one hundred and fifty six miles. Load number two. Load number two is going to go nine hundred and seventy seven miles. Or I'm sorry, it's paying eleven hundred dollars. And it's and it's going nine hundred and seventy seven miles. And load number three is going Nine hundred fifty dollars, and that's going one thousand eighty-two miles. Okay, so one is going to come out to be a dollar three cents a mile. Okay. Two is right at a dollar twelve a mile. And three, well, three is only 87 cents. Let's say it's a smaller thing, you know, like a one pallet that weighs 500 pounds. You're getting 87 cents. Okay. There you go. Now, here, I think, is where everyone makes the mis their mistake. I think it happens all the time. Is what they simply do is they come over here and say, all right, this load is paying me $3.00. And two cents a mile. Sounds pretty good. I'm probably going to get looked at crazy by people. So this sounds pretty good. Three dollars and two cents a mile is what this, uh, this, these three parcels pay. That sounds amazing. That sounds wonderful. Let me show you why it's not. So I'm going to write up here that number. Three dollars and two cents a mile. Now I'm going to get myself my eraser, which is just a, a shop towel. We're going to erase all this. My eraser not working so well. Okay, so three dollars and two cents a mile is what I think this is a, what a lot of people are messing up. They think they're making a lot of money with that. Okay, now here's what happens: you're forgetting about a lot of things. The total distance from and I have it written here. I'm not going to from Windsor to Denver to Sterling to Ray to Evansville, to Nashville, to Florence, Alabama, is 1446. Fourteen forty-six miles, okay? Now, the way you need to figure out these partials is take the total rate. So we knew it was $1,200 for Denver to Nashville, 1100 for Sterling to Evansville, 950. That total, is $3,250. When you take this number and you divide it by this number up here, you get what the true cost is, okay? $2.24 per mile. Now, still sounds okay, right? 224 is a decent load, but here's the problem. That all that is is a decent one load, one pick, one drop. That's all this is. That's not a great rate. And keep in mind, this is best case scenario. Now, here's the kicker, and this is where this is where you really lose out. Okay, um, you're going to spend at a minimum. Again, we are assuming everything flows smoothly. At a minimum, we're going to spend one entire day picking up. Next, we're going to spend two days, two days driving, because it's like 1,400 miles. It's two full days of driving to get there, okay? Then we got we to gotta spend a whole day driving around deliver. Okay? I'm sorry, it's not going to flow that smoothly. You have a certain amount of time you're allowed by the government to drive. It's not going to flow that smoothly. 
So we're gonna put an extra day in there. So you've just spent five days. You've just spent five days on this one partial. Strapping, unstrapping, hopefully not having to readjust cargo. Sometimes you have to. This is assuming everything goes perfect, okay? I want you, I want you to understand this. It's assuming everything goes perfect. It's four days. Really, it's gonna be five. And you're making this 3250. So now, I'm gonna take that 3250 and it's the number we're going to hold on to, okay? So good. Again, I know the numbers change, but the concept is the same. The numbers can change, but the concept is the same. So we are at, uh, we're at 3250. 3250 okay? Now, our next scenario that I have planned out, I start in Denver as well. Only this time, I'm just going to take, I'm just going to take average, I'm just going to take average paying straight loads, one, one pick, one drop. Um, so we're just going to take an average one pick, one drop load. Nothing crazy here. Uh, we're not even doing best case scenario with this. I'm not, I kind of picked locations that were, had decent deadheads from pickup to drop off. And I tried to plan for about an, for an easy week. Not even a hard week of driving, an easy week of driving. And I want to show you, I want to show you why this is so, um, why, why the, these partials really can, can, really are killing people, okay? So this load is going to have, or this week, this, this um, scenario is also going to have three loads. Only it's going to be one at a time. So we're going to take a load from Denver to Moline, Illinois that we find, okay? So, Denver to Moline. All right, then we're gonna take a load. We're gonna pick up a, drop that one. We're gonna pick up a load in Sterling, Illinois, and go to Omaha, Nebraska. Next, we're going to pick up a load in Lincoln, Nebraska. We're gonna take it to San Antonio, Texas. Okay, so this total amount of miles is 2269. 2269 total miles. Very easily attainable. I, I, I do more than that a week, but that's, that's very attainable number especially in five days so 2250 is is how far we're going to is how far we're going to drive that's a decent that's a nice easy five day drop i pick and drop uh each load independently now these are full loads okay and i want to answer a question somebody asked right here can you get better rates by operating with the cdl and running with a trailer that can gross eighteen thousand? cargo i'm sorry not gross i can carry 18,000 pounds of cargo compared to playing the cdl game absolutely because if you're not playing the cdl game you're gonna have a much harder time finding good hot shot loads that pay well and you're gonna have a very hard time partialing partials will be uh, anything under 10,000 pounds a lot of these brokers are starting to treat as partials okay? so absolutely you need as i think you need as much carrying capacity as you can but anyway beside the point somebody asked that question there's your there's my thought on it that's my answer okay so now what we're going to look at here is what do these loads pay all right denver to moline's paying seventeen hundred dollars all right it's paying seventeen hundred dollars and it's going 844 miles sterling to omaha is going 355 miles And it's going to bring us 650 bucks. And Lincoln to San Antonio is going 899 miles. And we're going to make 1900 bucks. Decent look, 1900 bucks. Now, again, I want to point out, I'm doing better than this on a lot of mine. A lot of mine. This is a very mediocre rate. These are, these are very mediocre rates. So same as last time, we're gonna name one, two, and three. And then I'll get out of the way. So we got one, two, and three, all right? 
Now what we're going to do is break it down by mile. Okay, so one, which was that Denver to Moline, is paying us 201 a mile. Two, Sterling to Omaha is $1.83 a mile. Not a very good load. Especially for that short run. That's actually a not that's not a good load at all. So this is again not a great week, but we're gonna use it. Last load, uh Lincoln to San Antonio, two dollars and eleven cents a mile. Now I've had loads where I'm getting over three dollars a mile. I've had a three fifty a mile load, I've had a four dollar a mile load. Okay, so I've had I've had some these are these are not great, but it makes the point. So I'm using a really good case scenario partial load and a really mediocre case just picking up and dropping off loads. And I'm not saying you can't make money partially, but this is why you got to be careful. Now, this is not, again, you don't just average these three numbers because what I did not include in these three numbers here, what I didn't include is the deadhead from Windsor, the deadhead to each location from that point. So what we have to do is the same thing we do with the partials. We've got to look at the total for the week, which is 4250 gross. It, I added it up, so it's 4250 gross. Divide by the total miles, 2269 miles. And what we actually averaged that week is $1.87 a mile. Okay? This is where it gets fun. This is where it's eye open. $1.87 a mile. Write this up here, 42.50. So now we have 42.50 and 32.50. So you can see already that in one week we have grossed. Now you can see in one week we've grossed $1,000 more. I didn't actually plan this. It ended up being exactly $1,000. I was just making up stuff on the way, but thousand bucks. Let's say you week, week let's say you work 40 weeks a year out of 52, you take 12 weeks off. Nobody's doing that, but let's say you take 12 weeks off. So you, 40, you work 42, 40 weeks in a year, you're going to gross an extra $40,000 a year by not doing those partials that you think you're making so much money on. $40,000. Now, but Paul, you say, you're driving more miles in a week. Touche. You are driving more miles in a week. And the answer to that is you're actually driving an extra 823 miles on this particular scenario. So you drive an extra 823 miles. Okay, well that, that means that you paid an extra 500 and $59 to cover your expenses, to cover your costs. That's not food or anything else, that's your cost in your truck. All right, well, then that means at the end of the day, in one week, you put an extra $441 in your pocket. That is not pocket change. And in a year, that means that by not doing those partials, you made $17,000. $640 raise by doing it this way. That's to you. Now, that does not include wages, you know, per se. That's just taking, and, and that's assuming, that's assuming that your truck and rig and everything, and this number, this number varies per person, but 68 cents a mile. It's assuming 68 cents a mile, that's your, that's your bonus. That's what you're making extra by not doing those partials, okay? And that's taking into account the extra miles. So, what I want to point out here is partials are not bad in and of themselves. Partials can make you very good money. But when I partial something, I'm partialing to FTL rates, full truckload rates. And I'm making 4 to $5 a mile. 
But when you do the actual math, I'm only making about 293 a mile. That's great. That's where you want to be. I mean, that's not great, but that's good, right? So you average, including your deadhead. That's a pretty good average, including deadhead. So my point being is that these partials that these brokers are posting, and I got more news for you. 80% of them, I might be, I'm completely pulling this number out of there, but a vast majority of those brokers are not getting, are not getting a partial rate from their customer. They're getting, they want, the customer wants their load from here to here. They don't care what it's labeled. They want it from here to here. They are paying that broker a full truckload rate. They're paying that broker for that load that paid $1,000. They're paying them $2,000. These brokers are keeping half. They're labeling it partial because they know they can get it. All right? So, you know, and I'm not saying all of them. I'm, but a lot of them are labeling these things partials, and they're charging their customers full rates. And they're keeping more money than you're getting it, and they're not even doing the hauling. So, again, that's back to the glass uh or going to the glass sorry for this episode on just strictly partials that's all we're going to talk about this episode hopefully you found it someone in um enjoyable i think i answered i think i only had one question i got the finger pain or the pain all over my fingers i think i answered all the questions from last time if i didn't i apologize please post them again in the comments oh and one last thing please like subscribe and Episode 10, I mentioned this in my Wednesday rant. I'm starting a new thing on Wednesday. This is my Sunday show, which it's not always going to be on Sunday because unfortunately it's just way, sometimes I can't get it in. But um, around Sunday and then a Wednesday rant is what I'm going to do. The Wednesday rant is more for fun. It's not backed. I'm not doing all this research. It's, it's not backed by all this. Um, but on episode 10 of our Sunday series, we're on episode 6, I think. On episode 10... I'm giving away one of these wonderful, not even the one I'm wearing, a brand new one, top of the line, high quality, um, one of a kind, uh, um, priceless hats, either orange or blue. You get to pick the color. So I haven't ironed out what, how we're going to do it. I'll figure that out for the next episode, but one of you is going to win it. However, you have to subscribe and you've got to like I think you've got to like, you've got to at least watch and like half of my videos. So five of the 10 episodes you need to watch and like, and you need to subscribe. And on week, on episode 10, I will give away one of these hats. I haven't figured out the rules yet, but I do know you need to subscribe and like, and it'll be probably, I'm thinking it'll be kind of a quiz. I'll ask a question about one of my previous episodes, something obscure in it that you're gonna have to know. And the first person to comment on it will get free free hat free awesome hat so thank you guys for watching again i want to be clear on this these are these are numbers that i just uh numbers that i just came up with it's theoretical situations but i tried to show you where a best case scenario partial load ends up being worse than an average week to not you know to kind of mediocre week not partially um and again i want to specify when i say partialing I like partially if I'm partialing for double the rate of what a normal load is then it's worth it to me but if you're partialing a dollar to dollar ten to dollar twenty cent a mile loads and you're and you're not picking up and dropping off in exactly the same place you're killing yourself and you are driving the rates down and in a year you're going to be the one on Facebook with hotshot rig for sale which includes all straps and chains just looking for someone to take over payments so Keep that in mind when you're thinking about doing this and asking questions and uh, we'll see you all next week.